What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the Bear Necessity TCG and today we're going to be talking about the post office and postage, more specifically non-machinable postage because I got two packages returned, both labeled non-machinable, where is my 44 cents? So I went down to the post office to ask some questions, but before we get into it, be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions about uh, selling cards, shipping cards, non-machinable or not, what's your experience with it? Because that's how I learned how to start my business. I looked at other YouTube videos, I left some comments, I read through all the comments and just kind of talked with everyone um, until I kind of ironed out what I wanted to do. So if you have a question, someone else probably has that question, so be sure to just, let's talk about it. So, going back to it, I have sent a thousand plus plain white envelopes out and so far only two got returned to me and that was recently both of those were destined to the same place they happen to be both in texas both around the same area so it had to go through the same post offices so i had to know did i do something wrong what is happening so i got there and I showed him the two envelopes. Uh, he picked them up, so let me show you kind of what he did. So, the actual cards that were shipped out weren't even that many. It wasn't even thick. This is an example. There was only two cards in it. A shipping shield that was taped together. We had a packing slip, so just a piece of paper folded. This was taped to the packing slip so it wouldn't slide around. But he grabbed it and then just laughed. So I was like, hey, it's not machinable. He just laughed. And I'm like, what are you laughing about? Uh, he was like, this happens all the time. He picked it up and then he kind of bent it a little. And he was like, I'd send it through. And kind of blew my mind. I'm like, what do you mean you'd send it through? He was like, oh, yeah, if I saw this, I would just send it through the sorter. If it didn't go through the sorter, I'd put it through a different sorter. If that didn't work, I would just put it in a bin to... Uh, the non-machinable area where you could just go um, hand sort it. And I was like, for this postage? He's like, yeah, no problem. They, that's not even that big of a deal. Uh, then he went on and told me a little more. So he said, it used to be that you could put a regular forever stamp and an additional ounce stamp, and that would cover the postage for non-machinable. Then I brought up another question. Because I was, I was going there going to buy some non-machinable stamps. And then he was like, you don't even need them. I'm like, what do you mean? I don't need them. He's like, as long as the postage is covered, the actual dollar amount is covered, then it's fine. It'll go through. So just for everyone, uh, a forever stamp is currently is worth 68 cents. An additional ounce is 24 cents, and a non-machinable stamp is a dollar twelve. So, for example, if you send some cards that are too, let's say, too thick for the standard shipment, and instead of using a non-machinable stamp, you put a forever stamp and two additional ounce stamps, that postage comes to a dollar sixteen which is four cents more than machinable. And they'll take it and they'll send it on through. No problem. So then my concern to him was, well, why would I ever just get, why would I get machinable stamps? He didn't really have an answer for me. He basically said, well, it tells the person not to run through the machine. I'm like, okay, that's worth the money, right? Uh, but apparently it's not. Because he said they just run it through the machine anyways. And I was like, so it's standard process for you to just run everything in the machine. He's like, well, not really. But we do it anyways. If something, if if they grab it and they eyeball it and they're like, you know what? This can run through this certain machine. They'll put it through. They might eyeball it and be like, you know what? I need to put it in a different machine that could handle some thicker um thicker things or they could grab and say you know what we're just going to hand sort this and they put it somewhere else so in the end it seems like this non-machinable stuff and postage in general 
is all up to the postal worker that happens to work there. So, not only that, they keep raising the the value, not the value of stamps, they raise the postage fees. I think that's the best way of saying it. So, at one point, you know, a stamp might be worth, you know, just to send a regular letter, it could be 50 cents, and now it's currently 68 cents. So they keep raising it, raising it, raising, and like I said, an ounce stamp and a forever stamp used to cover non-machinable, and we have postal workers that have been there for years. So they see that, and they're just like, you know what? We're just gonna send it through, no problem. His guess for what happened to me was that there was a new person or somebody that's very strict or the post office it landed at was very, very strict on the rules. And that's why it got returned to me. So uh, he just said, just keep return, keep sending them how you've been sending them. And if they come returned, just show up to the post office. They'll attach the extra 44 cents and then you're good. So I'm thinking that's what I'm going to be doing going forward but what scares me a little bit is kind of the well if a postal worker knows not to put it through because they're supposed to you know it's supposed to be non-machinable will they do it if i buy specific stamps non-machinable put not don't bend and things and overwhelmingly everyone i've talked to said no none of that matters so I'm gonna show a video of how the an unautomatic sorter works and how um, your mail gets twisted and bent and why you know some things might not get through. Uh, so let's just click play on that. So he also said that different post offices have different machines multiple different machines some newer some older but as you see it just blasts those emails emails <laughs> it blasts those envelopes right through and as you see it's sorting them in different directions and it's bending and it's looping and and that's kind of where it gets stuck um so let's say you have one stamp on it and you send that through and it gets stuck someone has to go in and grab it and pull it out and that, at that point, they look at the postage and they decide your fate, your customer's fate, on if it's going to be sent, if it's going to be returned to you, or if it's going to be sent to the customer and they're going to request additional postage. And that's happened before, too. They might say, hey, we're just going to hold it here. We're going to alert the... Um, the person it's going to, and they're gonna to have to come in and cover the additional postage. So really, it's up to the post office and your entire uh, your entire kind of card business really depends on how they feel. We're at the mercy of the postal workers because you can put the correct amount of postage. Let's say you use nothing but non-machinable stamps. You could do that. But like I said before, the postal worker said they're going to machine it anyways. They're just going to throw it through because um, basically what they're saying is <laughs> it goes through the machines most of the time. So they're going to deal with it if there's an actual issue. And so uh, with all that being said, uh, I'm not sure what I'm trying to convey here. I think it's to give you the information. Uh, if you're thinking about starting and you're afraid of of uh, sending things in plain white envelopes, how much postage you need to put on it, um, in the end, even if you do everything right, they could still end up machining that thing. You could be paying extra for postage, or you could just you could uh, keep attempting just to put the minimum forever stamp. And I say. Uh, based on what I've been doing, 99% of the time it goes through just fine. The only time it becomes a problem is if it goes above that that ounce. But as long as I add that additional um, additional ounce at 24, none of these have ever came back to me. Not a single one has come back to me, and I believe it's because the older postal workers see that and they're like, "Well, <laughs> it's." It's close to machinable, not or non-machinable. 
it's close just send it through uh but if we look at the prices um just real quick uh so 68 cents with the forever stamp i just want to make sure that i have everything right that covers an ounce additional is 24 cents covers an additional ounce you you can't just you it's not worth stacking in um, you know, like four or five additional ounce stamps to send it out. Just don't even do that. And then our non-machinable uh, stamp goes for one dollar and twelve cents. Now, what he did say is, if you send your cards in a envelope that's kind of a non-standard shape, so an envelope that is not not you know rectangular like this i have an example over here so he said an envelope like this is more likely to not go through the actual sorter but it kind of looks like this went through the sorter anyways you could see that there's something that was grabbing onto this and running it through so in the end the post office is just a bunch of bullshit. Stamps, bunch of bullshit. They just do what they want. So, uh, I just wanted to let you know and give you the insight so you don't have to go through the post office. You don't have to wonder what's going on. I've been doing this for, what is it, seven, eight months of selling on TCG Player uh, and over a thousand sales and shipments and everything like that. And... I don't even know what's going on with the postal office. So with all that being said, good luck if you want to start a card business or if you're in it. If you're wondering these things, if you thought that there was an actual uh, definitive, this is what I need to do to ensure uh, that things do not go through the, the automatic sorter and it's hand sorted. I am sorry to say it all depends on what post office you are sending out of and then what post office is receiving it before it gets on the trucks and sent out to your customers there is zero way to know there's zero way to be 100 percent this is just something you have to factor into your business cost some cards will be damaged some cards will be returned to you and if they are returned to you most likely the cards are going to be late uh, once you resend them out to the customer, so you might have to do some refunds or partial refunds. Just factor all these things. Again, 99% of the cards went through, no problem. So just keep that in mind, set some money aside, adjust your prices to calculate for the post office screwing you over. Uh, even if you have enough postage and... Um, Good luck. I wish everyone the best on their uh, TCG Player eBay business. And I'll catch everyone next time.